Today I'll show you what I use for foliar spraying uh, to add a whole bunch of nutrients and uh, trace elements to the plants, but at the same time be an effective antifungal such as, so I'm in South Florida, so we have anthracnose, powdery mildews on mangoes, but there are several other fungal diseases like cankers, black spot, brown rots, uh, greasy uh, black pitting. So I'm going to start with, so I have a four gallon uh, backpack sprayer. I know a lot of you commercial growers uh, have a automated sprayer, a big machines. So this is good enough for me because I'm using this for my home use. Uh, if it's a few plants, you can even use a gallon sprayer. So it's no big deal. So I filled this up halfway with distilled water. You can use rain water or reverse osmosis water. So this is halfway full. I'm going to start with adding some Epsom salt. This is magnesium sulfate, uh, around two tablespoons. I didn't bring my, I didn't want to bring my 50 pound bag here. So I put it in a, a cardboard. So I'll add these to a glass. So, you know, it does, it's mixed first because it might not mix well in that thing. So this will prevent any lumps or clumping. So I'll just mix it here. Okay, that's the Epsom salt. Next, I'll add some chelated iron. It's important that the iron is chelated. Otherwise, the plant is not gonna take it. So I'm using EDDHA. It's a chelated iron. So for a four gallon, I'll add around two tablespoons. Same amount as the magnesium, two tablespoons. some chelated calcium. Now, I actually have a lot of calcium in my soil. I add gypsum to it, which is calcium sulfate, and I keep my pH a little low so it absorbs the calcium. So I'm gonna skip the calcium for now. Plus, I don't want too many things in the spray and clog it up, so skip the calcium. The next thing I'm gonna add is this is potassium silicate. Now, potassium is an essential uh, nutrient for the plants, but also potassium silicate can prevent fungal disease and uh, stop the spread of it. So definitely you want to add this. Plus, you know, you want the magnesium, the, the calcium and the potassium. Every, so same, two, two tablespoons. Now, Two big tablespoons. Keep stirring because this might clog up. It's good to stir this thing. Now the iron would stain, stain your hand. So, okay. The next thing I'm going to add is just keep the spoon washed off. So, chelated manganese. Now, manganese and iron are essential for mangoes and pretty much all the other tropical fruit trees you have. So I'm going to add not too much, uh, I would say a half, a, like one teaspoon is fine. You don't need to overdo this. Same with zinc. These are all antimicrobials. The, the yeast and the bacteria do not, would not be happy. Same, like a one teaspoon of zinc. I like to stir between each thing so it makes sure it doesn't clump up. Next thing would be molybdenum. This is a essential trace mineral that is needed for fruiting and overall health of the plant, but you don't need too much of this. Just one pinch. This is molybdenum.
the next would be around half a spoon of boron this is boric acid uh, it in high doses it can burn your trees burn your leaves so you want to back off on this boron and I would say do not spray boron like every spray just I would do six sprays every year with boron and the other six without boron so so boron is a powerful antimicrobial now the two most antifungal thing here plus they're essential would be sulfur this is pure sulfur 99.9% .9 pure sulfur this is hard to mix so as soon as you put this in keep stirring I'm gonna add one heaping tablespoon uh, to two tablespoons same amount as the iron and the magnesium keep stirring now sulfur will also lower the pH over time so it's a good thing to add so that's that washing my spoon so it doesn't cross contaminate okay let me know if I missed anything so next I'll add a few trace minerals and uh, well the second fungicide would be copper now you can add copper oxide or copper sulfate copper sulfate would be a little more anti-fungal but I've seen that the mangoes do not give a whole lot of fruit if you just go with basic copper the, the copper liquid liquid copper fungi fungicide is more powerful now copper is a contact fungicide meaning it'll only kill the fungus wherever you spray it and you want to spray it every month but just like boron you don't want to spray too much and build up of copper when that that'll kill off the beneficial microbes so I would spray copper and boron combined every like six months out of the year especially the cooler months like you know October November up until March because that's when it, it's like humid and rainy out here not enough Sun and the fungus uh, wakes up so the winter six months of the winter is when I spray copper and boron the other six months I just do a regular foliar feed I don't add any fungicide to it so the recommendation for copper is four teaspoons per gallon so ideally this should take 16 teaspoons but I'm gonna back off on that it too so I'll go with half the amount so eight teaspoons this is going to stain it just like the iron so six seven Give it a mix make sure everything is dissolved the sulfur is the main concern because that you got to keep on shaking the backpack otherwise uh, it can clog up so I'm gonna just go ahead and add these make sure nothing is wasted So the last two things I'm going to add to this is li liquid seaweed extract. This would add the iodine and other trace minerals pretty much found in the ocean. So this is excellent. So I would add around four, four tablespoons of this. Just eyeball it. One, two, three, four. Typically a lot of people add a surfactant. It's like, you know, when you have put rain X on your car window it the water beads up and slides off. That's what's gonna happen with this. So to prevent that and to have that product stick to your leaves and penetrate it and not wash off easily, you would add 
something called a surfactant or an adjuvant, something like a kinetic or they, uh, these uh, Southern Egg Company, they make a product also called a surfactant. So you can use, use those, but because I have blooms on my trees, I don't want to have any kind of oily substance sticking to my uh, blooms. Uh, if the rain comes, it'll wash off and that's fine. It's not getting wasted, it's falling right down there. The last thing would be humic acid. Now, humic acid is derived from humic shell, which has uh, 70 plus different trace minerals. Uh, excellent product. So, same four tablespoons. One, two, three, four. So, four tablespoons of that. Now, a lot of you might be saying, like a lot of you organic people, like, oh my God, this is too many chemicals. It's going to kill off all the beneficial bacteria and the beneficial funguses. And you would be right. I mean, may as well just go buy a mango from the grocery, right? They spray it with all the chemicals without any beneficial. So what I do to counter that is I have in this bucket a uh, compost key which is basically uh, warm castings topped off with water, rainwater, and it has mycorrhizae fungus and all the beneficial soil-based bacteria from the earthworms. And I add a little molasses so that they can feed into it and multiply. So it multiplies all the bacteria. Plus uh, it has an aerator, which is important because that encourages the aerobic bacteria. The bacteria that's gonna live on the leaves has to be aerobic uh, so that's what I'm encouraging the growth of in the bubbler so to that I'm gonna add something called a foliar pack it's a product called bio war foliar pack you can look it up on eBay or Amazon uh, this is a strain of few different bacteria. now you might say hey what you're adding this to all that boron and zinc and copper it's gonna kill off all these well not necessarily there are always survivors it's gonna kill off some but there are gonna be some ant resistant strains plus if you were to spray it separately you're still gonna kill them because they're gonna go to the same place at the end which is the tree so uh, it's okay to add them uh, So I would add like a, a teaspoon is fine, teaspoon of it's a foliar pack. It's basically strain strain of five different bacteria and funguses. And that should be it. So I'm gonna top this off with the compost tea. Around 50% compost tea and 50% distilled water. And make sure you shake it up and that should be good to go that's now this right before winter like i said i spray this six months every in the cold season and that seems to make the trees cold resistant and take on more cold uh, and and not get any fungal disease or rots or anything root rots now i use a separate product for when I plant my trees and for the root, I have a different set of bacteria for those uh, and minerals. But uh, this is just for foliar spray. And I do this every month, six months during the winter season, I would use all of these. But the other six months during the spring, I would skip the copper and the boron. No boron, no copper. But, the, uh, but I would still spray them every month. So, uh, that's it. I'm going to this is the compost tea, just top it off.
to spray some fruit trees. I have already sprayed my mangoes, so I'll just spray this calamondin tree. You want to hit the underside of it also. There you go. Beautiful tree.